Welcome to the Cyrus Rustam Show. Join me, former commando and fitness entrepreneur, to fearlessly become the ultimate vision of you. All right, let's start recording. We've just been talking for 10 minutes and <laughs> I realized that we need to get on this. So today I've got Toby, who is a former Royal Marines commando. And the reason why I made the table uh, so long between us is so that you can't compare my body to his. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Good, thank you, mate. Yeah, very well. All right, really glad to have you here. Thanks for coming. We were just talking about uh, coaching, but I want to take it back a little bit. And just to give everyone listening a little bit of background about yourself, like just basically tell me about school life, family life, and what you first did in the world. Okay, so originally I'm from South Wales, um, arse end of nowhere in the countryside, kind of grew up doing uh, very much to do with like horses and outdoorsy kind of stuff. Um, always been a very active person, was quite like rugby, as in Wales you have to do rugby, didn't know what football was till I was about 12 years old, mm. um, boxing and things like that, so I've always been very active, See, um, as you mentioned from a young age. Joined the Marines at 17. Mm. You were, you joined young as well? Yeah, I was 16. 16, yeah, yeah, yeah. So joined the Marines at uh, 17, served for five years, um, majority of that at 4 Super Commando. Um, from there then, life didn't go as planned. Um, got in a bit of trouble when I was about 22, just after I left the Marines. Uh, what I decided I was going to go and do didn't work out. Moved to Dubai on a whim. Um, started coaching, PTing out here. Um, eight years later, still here. And the rest is history. So, <laughs> so going back to your childhood, because for those that are listening that don't know you or don't follow you, you are, I would say, extreme in a sense with your mindset and your discipline. Even for from a from a bootneck, and I'll get into my side of like my story of discipline. When I was a Royal Marine, I was not self-disciplined. And, and I, that became evident to me when I left, mm. and it all unraveled, and I had to regain discipline as an individual, not as a, as a Marine in, yeah, in that yeah. environment, yeah. right? But you seem to be... What, was it, what I'm trying to get at is from your upbringing, like, was there... Were you always disciplined? Did your family instill things in you, like... Yeah, so uh, I think my father was a big sort of like influence with it. He was a very... So my dad, for example, at 16, 17 years old, he's living in a car. Uh, he had no money, had nothing. Um, I was born in a 13-bedroom house. Right? <laughs> I didn't grow up wealthy. <laughs> Everything went very south shortly after I was born. But... The, the journey that my father went on, like his dad killed himself when he was 13 years old. Wow. Um, had a very like tough upbringing. Um, so he instilled a lot of that into me about like even being like physically strong, mentally strong, you know, even to the point where um, he was like, your sisters can cry, you can't cry. Mm. He was like, oh, if I see you crying, I'm going to go to school and tell your friends that you're crying like a girl, right? Wow. So straight away from a young age, I was like, okay, I have to be this kind of like tough guy and mm. then I'd always be trying to impress him with like have I got a six pack I'm like right. I'm like a child still right and he, yeah, yeah. how many laps can you do in an hour you know like right. feel. so wow. straight away from a young age um, he he instilled this like I guess like this like traditional like macho kind of like, yeah. that was the only way I thought I had to do that was to impress obviously my father mm. um, then I didn't really have like the closest relationship with him after that, like him and my mother split up when I was three. Um, he had a lot of health problems. He had five strokes, two or three different types of cancers, right? He was wow. proper had it. Um, so he wasn't really around an awful lot. So then as I was growing up, kind of what I would try to push in myself was that like everything that he taught me and how like, disciplined he was and like I would get validation every time I went back to see him. I was like, oh, look, I've been boxing. I've been training. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it for me um, was, I think it was like validation. I wanted to be recognized. I wanted to be like tough because I had two sisters and my mother. So I was the only boy mm -hmm. in the house. So I was already felt a little bit like 
I didn't want to be like my sisters. Mm. You know, my sisters are very hardworking and sporty and stuff. I had to be like so different to them. Right. So, you know, they'd be sitting in watching a movie. I'd be outside like skipping. Right. Um, Interesting. And I don't really know what, where the drive come from until I was a bit older. And now yeah. I think it was all for, a lot of it was for validation. Yeah. As in, that's what my father told me that you should be like. So mm. then I did, I saw him, sometimes I saw him once a week. Sometimes I go 12 months without seeing him, right? As a kid. Really? Yeah, it would be a long, it'd be quite a long time. So in my head, I was always like, like when I see him, I've got to be, you know, as a kid, you always want to be like, oh, you've grown, you're taller, right? Yeah. So I wanted, wanted to always be like, oh, you've got better or you've done this. And right. So it was always like, um, yeah, I think like recognition and, and validation for me, which which drove it. It wasn't as much discipline. It was kind of, mm. it was just working towards something mm. constantly, I think. Yeah. Mm. And when you when you met him in those situations, would he praise you? Like, would, yeah, yeah, he would, yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Like, okay. I was like the best thing ever. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so it would, be, it would be worth it for me, you know, to, yeah. to be like that, yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I think it was just, again, growing up with, it was just me, two sisters, and my mother. So I I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to be girly. I yeah. was like, my fear was like to, to be girly. So right. I would always push myself then and be as like macho as I can. Yeah. Again, like rugby and unboxing and right, right. getting into fights in school and stuff like this. It was always like I had to do the whole yeah. opposite to, to what they were doing. Yeah, yeah. No, I can see that. Um, is that still alive? No, he actually died when I was 19. 19. Yeah, 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 yeah. That must have been tough. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it's, it was a funny time, actually. I dealt with it in a, honestly, I didn't really deal with it. Right. I was, from a young age, like, you tell me, oh, I'm sick. You know, I'm not going to be around for very long. He said this, he said this to me from when I was probably six or seven years old. Wow. And he, he survived I was well, 19. Yeah. But he did, you know, he had bad strokes, he had cancers and stuff like this. But um, mm. I took... A weekend off when he died, and then I went back to I was at four two commando. I just joined, I just joined, um, and I was in. I just went back to work. I didn't say anything. Wow. My, sergeant, my sergeant major like, intro, like had an introduction interview with my sergeant major. He's like, oh, any um, anything I need to know about? Any dates coming up? Anything you need to get away from? I just our oh, next weekend. Um, if I can definitely get it off, would be really great. But no worries if not. He's like, why? What's happening next weekend? I said, oh, it's my dad's funeral. Oh, He's like, shit. What the fuck are you doing in work? Wow. I was like, oh, I've just joined the unit. I come from um, Faz Lane. Right. I just joined the unit. I just joined 4 2. Right. So I was like, you know, I didn't want to. So like, I don't want to be the guy that takes the first week off for, right. for you know, like personal reasons. Right. He's like, oh, you fucking idiot. He's yeah. like, go home if you want. I was like, no, nah, I don't want it. Oh, you know, like, really? I, wanted, I wanted to be in with the lads because you know what it's like. It's yeah. Very, uh, yeah, for sure. You're either in, in the group or you're not. 100%. So I was like, I'm not going to, the first two weeks, I'm not going to be like in and out. Fuck that. Fuck it. Just <laughs> here's, here's a question for you then. Uh, when you have a son, when you have children, do you want kids? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So if you had a son, would you, like, give, given the upbringing that you had, like, would you tell your son the same stuff as in like, you know, you need to be, you know, don't cry and stuff like this? Or how, how would you approach that? I think I'd probably do it in a bit more of a maybe emotionally intelligent way. Right. Like my dad definitely had a harder life than me. Yeah. So he had to be a certain way. Yeah. Otherwise he wouldn't have, wouldn't have made it. And like yeah. he ended up being very successful until he wasn't. So I feel like his mindset and his way of doing everything got him from living in a car mm. to living in a 13-bedroom house. Right. I'm not singing a sob story. I didn't have the easiest upbringing, yeah. but it wasn't anywhere near as hard as him. Yeah. So I think it's like a watered-down effect. Yes. In, if I have a son, yeah. he'll probably live in Dubai, Yeah. probably won't go through half of what I did, and it won't even be like a tenth of what my no father did. So I feel like the principles are the same, yeah, but not as extreme. Like, yeah, it's yeah. okay to cry if you're a seven year old boy. Of course it is. Yeah, like, yeah. you don't yeah. have to have a six pack. You don't have to run around the field to prove to me that you're, you know, you're tough. Right, like, right. right. Like, I like, I like the idea of it, but in yeah, a, yeah, you know, like a hundred percent. It's good to push boys, I think, and allow them to be boys and let them know that you know, boys are a certain way like you're for, for me you're like a very I see you on your Instagram with your son yeah. I think you're a very nice masculine 
role model. Yeah. But I also get a nice energy from you as well. Mm. Like you're not like yeah, an asshole. Like, yeah, you know? yeah, but, yeah, for sure. So I think it's uh, I think the principles yeah are the same yeah, but not the extremity. Like. Absolutely. And like you said, they went through a certain type of life yeah. that we could never imagine. Yeah. And you never know. Our parents always did the best that they could. Exactly, yeah. I had a kind of a, a, a different upbringing. My mum left my dad when I was 12 and took my two sisters and my brother with her. And we didn't speak to her. Me and my dad didn't speak to that side of the family oh, so you were left. for 15 years. So I was with wow, my dad. Oh, okay, okay. And, but my dad wasn't... It did give me no direction. Yeah. Zero direction. To the point when I was 12, he, t- he told me, there's food in the cupboards, uh, I'm going to go to work, and you know, you're never going to go hungry, but take care of yourself. <laughs> and I was like, oh, like I actually have to wash my clothes, clean the <laughs> house, or I didn't have clothes to wear. Like, yeah. um, but he always told me, my, he said, my dad forced me to become an engineer, and I will never force anything on you you make your own life I will support you Mm. and remember you can do anything that you want so from 12 years old I was completely free to run around the streets and get in I could go home anytime I wanted I didn't have to go to school if I didn't want to and he just said you make your bed you have to sleep in it you'll find out the Mm. hard way if you need to that um, you know if you don't want to go to school don't go go to school and they would call him in and he would say yeah He's making his own choices, you know? <laughs> uh, and it was good for me, for my personality, that was perfect. Because I got to figure out from an early age where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I was lucky enough to find the, the Marines at a very early age. It was actually at around 12, 13 that I oh, okay, okay. coincidentally heard about them. And that got me like fi- yeah, yeah. fixed on that. But it could have gone the other direction. Yeah. Like, it might have just been a coincidence that... Um, it's, but, there's a, usually a common denominator with men that join the Marines, especially when they're younger. Fucked up background is like, yeah, 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 it's like, yeah, yeah. We've all got it. <laughs> no, no one I know in the military is like, yeah, just, you know, parents were together. Yeah, yeah, we it's always perfect, like, <laughs> We're all messed up. Um, oh, that's very interesting. Um, so, some of the stuff that I see you do on social media is just mind-blowing, man. Uh, you know, you you were going to do something recently with the whole hundred, hundred, hundred thing. I'm like, that's insane yeah, yeah. to even say you're going to do something like that and have it in your mind. Like, as I'm going to do this, is like, what the fuck? Mm. So where where did the where did that start? Like these insane challenges that you do. Um, recently, really, within the last couple of years since I stopped bodybuilding. Obviously, like in the Marines, you don't really do, you do tough training, but you're forced to do it. So yeah. outside of that, you don't want to, I didn't want to do it. Like I used to like lift weights just to look good, Yeah. but you wouldn't catch me doing like an extra run or something in the Marines. I would definitely wouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to run a marathon on the weekend because you're training hard all week. Yeah. So I didn't really have any inspiration to like push myself further than I needed to right. when I was in there. Um, obviously, I left the Marines and I... I found it a bit difficult when I left for about six months or something. And then I got into bodybuilding. A guy had, on my PT course was like, oh, you've got a good physique that you should compete. I'll coach you. He sent me like <laughs> training plan, diet plan, which didn't change for eight weeks. I did a competition and I was like, um, so I don't have this like anxiety anymore. I, I, for the first time in my life, I had anxiety when I, when I left. I left yeah. But like my life went a little bit shit for certain reasons. Mm. But... Um, so I had no direction. So I started mm-hmm. doing bodybuilding competitions. I never really liked the competition. Never really cared for getting on stage in little pants, really. Like, mm-hmm. But it was the prep to get me there, getting up in the morning, doing an hour of cardio, being starving hungry, and then waiting an hour before I ate my eggs. So that was like the discipline that came after the Marines, which I was like, wow, I actually like really needed this. Because mm-hmm. without it, I could... I had no, I could get up when I wanted, I could do what I wanted, there was no one telling me anything. Yeah. And for three months, it was like, this is amazing. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I was like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no one in charge of me. Yeah, um, for sure. So I had to take charge of myself and put myself into a routine. But anyway, I was like obsessed with the routine of bodybuilding. 
Again, the competition side, I never really fell in love with it. I just loved the, the days where you're like absolutely exhausted and you're on like 1,200 calories and you get it done. And like that for me was like so rewarding. And then when I stopped bodybuilding, uh, May 2022 was the last, so about two and a half years ago, um, I was like, I've got all this energy. Like, what do I do with it? Like, I'm just training. So um, I think that's when I started doing like a 5K run and then like a 10K run. Um, and then I got quite good at rowing and I saw people like doing these certain times, there were certain distances. And I just wanted to like, okay, these guys are like fit. So I wasn't fit at the time, I was just a bodybuilder. But if I can get near these guys' times, then, you know, it's, and push myself mentally, after it, I'd feel this huge like release. Like I've, I've tapped into something in here mm. and everything is like, uh, this like, how do you call it? Like, almost like nervous energy. Mm. I completely just drain my body of it. And then for mm. about, I say a week, but that's exaggerating. Probably like three or four days, I'm on like a high of just being like, I've achieved something. I pushed everything out of me. Mm. Um, so after that, I just kept seeing like, where, where can I go with it? Mm. Cause the fitness side of things for me, like cardiovascular, I'm naturally a lot better at that than I am at bodybuilding. Like I've I've always been in good like shape, but I could never be like a huge guy. But fitness, I got into like running and rowing. But within like twelve months, I'm like top of the leaderboards in the UK and the world for rowing. So I was like, insane. Okay, I'm actually quite good at this. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> insane. Ins- insane. Like the pro professional people that do this is like a, a thing, and you just come in. Some bodybuilders just come in and, and fuck shit up, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny on the on the on the concept website. It's all the guys in like their rowing <laughs> leotards, and I put one when I was like super jacked. In it. <laughs> <laughs> all like six foot four. I'm like five eleven. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking insane, mate. But um, J- just what you said there, like, because I've gotten fairly lean before, not bodybuilding lean, like seven. 7% body fat. Yeah. Um, and it is one of the most difficult things to do. Uh, uh, hard, physical, hard physical challenges are, you know, whatever. You, you, you're in pain. You can tell yourself, you know, another hour or so of this and it's done and you can always see through it. But when you're hungry and you have like a month. It's a nightmare, isn't it? It's, it's like, what? There's no... Um, it's... It, it, it's like a slow torturous kind of feeling you know like when you're doing a run or anything like this and it's hard you can kind of like motivate yourself right and you kind of when you push through the hard patch you almost get like a little bit of adrenaline yeah like okay like even like I did 100k two weeks ago now I always around like 60 70k mark it's the hardest bit for me Mm. and then when I get past that 70k mark it's fairly like downhill so to speak Mm. and then I think I pass that that hard 10k I get like this uh, like surge of energy then. Like, right. Fuck, I've done the hard bit. That's it, 100K is done. As soon as that 70K is done, 100K is done in my head. Right. So the last 30K, I'm like, fucking, let's finish this, right? Right, strong. But with dieting, it's like for a competition or a photo shoot or whatever your like, end goal is for your condition, the closer you get, like, the worse you feel, mm. usually, right? Mm. And there's no like high in it. Mm. It's just constantly like dipping down, dipping down, dipping down. And what was a, a 12 week prep most people do right yeah. or cuts or something and yeah. to get like to get 10% is hard but to get I think that like that Oof. 7 6% is um, it's not a little bit harder it's, it's like 10 times harder, right it's a lot harder it takes over your life you can't yeah 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 you can't focus I mean one of the reasons I I, I stopped was because it was just to the point where nothing else really mattered yeah. And when you're hungry, actually nothing else really like, matters. You can't think, you can't no, do no. anything. You know, you're like driving for food and like, you're stuck in traffic and you're starving. You're like, I just don't care about anything no. right now. I just want to eat. But yeah. But it's like... <laughs> Your life is like Literally. That. And it's like a month of that. Fuck. You know, you're trying to have like a relationship and a business and yeah. actually be like a genuinely normal person. It's, mm. it's like... And then you get on stage and you don't win. You know, yeah. or, or you don't like how you look. Mm. Mm. But I think the... The hard... Like, so what... Like, go, that's you said it yourself like you you, but you you got something from that like 
it was your you said you enjoyed it almost like yeah, you needed yeah. it yeah for that kind of focus that discipline and i think that you know that that would definitely carry itself into these uh, hard physical challenges that you have been doing and that will also carry over into business as well mm. because a bit man business is just the say it's the long slow day by day doing the same shit yeah, yeah. and slowly just progressing and mm-hmm. and, and, it, and then you, you look back over the years and it's like oh wow I've achieved so much but it's a daily you don't sh- notice when you're in it kind of a, thing right? no you don't yeah. you don't because of the time uh, profit. it's only when you look back and you go wow this yeah, is amazing yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, before we get into the business and the coaching and stuff what is the single most hardest physical challenge that you've ever done where you you were just like I don't know if I can I don't know if this is or have you never hit that point mentally where you've thought about throwing the towel in the hardest one for me was probably the I did 161k at uh, Quadra so 100 miles um, but <laughs> I don't want to sound like a dick but my energy is always fine right my breathing is always fine my heart rate there's no like I don't have crashes or the only thing was the, I did most of my running on the treadmill right yeah with these I told you these like alpha flies mm. um, and they're not meant for heavy people moving slow they're right. meant for 60 kilo guys moving at two and a half hour marathon pace mm. so I wore these shoes thinking like oh they're fine I've not run outdoors in them I'd only run on the treadmill with them mm. so first 5k in so it was like 30 minutes in uh, my knee was just like in absolute bits and I thought about throwing the towel in then at 5k because so, I've already done 100k right so I was like I'm not going to do 100k because I've done it so if I, if I go past 100k it's got to be significant my, my plan was to do 200k that's why I went up there to do 200k right um, on your own yeah so my, uh, my friend Claude he's a bit the older guy I yeah. do stuff with he came up at about 50k mark okay um, on a little granny bike with a basket because uh-huh. at that point I was running with my water and everything as well oh so on, you had everything with you yeah 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 so um, so from five, 5k five you, your knee felt like it was going to fall off yeah it was just like you know when you get like a, like a stabbing pain in your knee and I was like I, I, I either quit now or I don't right because I had it, 200 was in my head right. but 161 was like where I would settle for so okay. I, I had to do the 100 mile mark right um <laughs> So that was the point then where I had to really decide. I was like, how, like, how tough are you actually to do it? Because it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt now for the next... It took me 24 hours to do it. <laughs> I was like, how tough are you? Like, if you, you I've come up here for a challenge. Mm. Do you want to... If, if I had no pain and I finished it and it wasn't that hard, mm. are you going to be like, oh, that was... It's not, it's not the distance. People can run, run way further, mm. run way further than me. Mm. I'm not trying to beat anyone. It was like, I want the mental challenge. Mm. So it was at that sort of 5K mark where I said, you come up here for a challenge, you're not at your 100%. So here's the challenge. Now it starts now. So either <laughs> like take it on the like take it on the chin as you said you would. Yeah. Because I wanted to push myself yeah. or quit. Yeah. And make this excuse that, oh guys, my knee hurt. I'll do mm. it next weekend. And then mm. next weekend your knee starts hurting again. So mm. I thought, fuck it, you're here now just do it like worst that's going to happen is you're going to have issues for the rest of your life <laughs> mate that yeah yeah <laughs> no, that, there's, again it's that mindset that you've got of kind of like com- compartmentalizing the the pain and the suffering it's like okay it's there yeah but I've come up here for a reason to do this and it's mind mind over matter like, every, yeah, everything yeah. you told me so far is mind over matter uh, mm-hmm. physically I mean if you just going out there and your knee felt like it was going to snap I mean you, you're done right yeah yeah, yeah you're yeah. just like no it's not going to stop me because it didn't get worse really right it only got worse in the last 20k or something really so between 5k and a 140k <laughs> it was just it was bad but it wasn't getting worse and worse and worse and worse I was just like okay, it's just there but you know with pain like it's tiring right it's yeah. like kind of exhausting you deal, yeah you've got to deal with it well that you, you block, you're almost blocking it out yeah 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 you're recognising it but you're like no and there's only so long you can go with that right yeah, it's going to yeah. start really but then it starts kicking in and like okay what if this is like permanent 
Mm. You know, like what if I am I have done something to it and I'm just wearing P- it permanently, down. like right, fucking yeah, like or even if I can't train probably for six months, I'd be absolutely gutted. Yeah. So I was like, okay, where's ego? Where's you know, like yeah, 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 yeah. But, How far do I yeah, go with this? Uh, the challenge was there, you know, like I wanted the challenge, I wanted to test myself, mm. and it was I tested myself in a different way. Mm. Um, Different way than what you thought you were going to yeah, test yourself. Because yeah. I thought, oh, I'll do what, I, I've done 100K. 100K mark would be easy. Like, I did 100K two weeks ago on treadmill. Like, honestly, apart from my hamstrings getting a bit, like, crampy, it wasn't hard. It was fine. It was, like, yeah. It was it's, six, it's, six out of ten, I would say. It's very unusual for a guy of your size. The, the guys that I have known in my life that are good at, um, you know, boot necks and people that are rugby players that have the size are terrible at endurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are an anomaly in that sense because you've yeah. got the endurance and you've got the size as well. W- what do you think that is? Is it... Uh, Honestly, I don't know. Even since a kid, I was always... Like, long distance stuff, I could just... Easy. Yeah. And the, the commando tests for you were just, what, a piece of piss? Well, they were hard because I wanted the PT medalist, right? So I wanted to get the fastest times. Okay, did uh, you get it? Yeah, yeah did you? Ah, <laughs> so nice. I, I pushed myself like right. to the limit on those. You must. Have, you were the top guy in your troop then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you go through with your original troop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. And yeah. the thirty miler and stuff like that was, it was fine. Yeah, thirty miler was okay. I, I failed the commando test the first three times. Um, I had a, I had a um, what's it called? Infection in my knee. And the first time I tried it with my original troop, I was uh, like throwing up my food in the mornings and my, my leg was all, my veins were all bright red and I was hiding the infection from everyone in the training team so I didn't want to get uh, my yeah. troop. <laughs> um, and they were, they were, because I was one of the fittest in the, in the troop, I wouldn't say fittest, but I was top yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. They noticed, cons- they noticed. Consistently. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, we have to move you, you failed, we have to send you back. And I tried with the, the troop behind us yeah. failed again. Troop behind got to the thirty miler, got to mile twenty two, and um, and collapsed. I had heat exhaustion, and they sent me to the hospital. And the doctor was fuming. He was like, "You are an absolute idiot!" Like he said a few short years ago, we would have chopped your leg off without asking you. We would have put you to sleep and chopped it off. And they put me on all these meds and the, the infection went down and, and then I had to go into Hunter and do the whole thing. Yeah, and your fitness, because you peak then, aren't you, as Mate, well? So. I wish... I didn't realise how unfit I'd gotten until they stuck me back in a troop and I went for a run and I was at the back and I was used to being at the front. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, yeah. what is wrong with me? It's scary how quickly you lose it, it right, as well. From that peak, peak cardio, it did take long to no, kind no, of... Uh, so then your body's exhausted, isn't it? Yeah. That's a big difference, like I tell people about any fit person can go and complete the commando tests but the 30 weeks 32 weeks building up to it where you're sleep deprived mm. stressed like Lost infections yeah yeah it was like yeah. that's the bit that you got to get through yeah. you, you, you're doing the commando tests on like your reserve tank yeah I could probably go and do them tomorrow yeah And but could I go and do 32 weeks now no I don't think so I mm. think I would probably end up with an injury or something now yeah when exactly I'm, 12 years older or something now yeah no 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 for sure um, 14 years older fucking hell yeah so <laughs> why did you leave the military um, I left to there was nothing really happening for a start I like things I loved it I absolutely loved like the lads I loved the lifestyle it was really suited for me um, I left to go and do a private security okay. kind of stuff because I've always been fairly ambitious and when something a year repeats itself and there's no progress in that year for me I'm like I'm wasting my time now mm-hmm. and I couldn't see like I was a PW3 so I was um, PW machine gun attached to heavy heavy weapons fire support group they were like yeah because I was young as well I was 22 but if I, you probably look at another four or five years maybe for promotion I'm like oh, I'm on not even 1500 quid a month probably on yeah. like 1300 quid a month yeah it's like it's fine now at 22 at 27 do I want to be on 1300 quid a month I, I might get a juniors yeah or I might get you know promoted mm. it's like <laughs> to 1800 quid a month <laughs> yeah I'm like uh, I think I can probably go outside and my stepfather was kind of like mate it's a good life and all that but you know it's unless you want to stay in as a career if you 
want to go out and make money. He's like, there's no point staying in until you're 25, 26. He's like, yeah. leave now because at my five year point, I can leave. Mm. So I just leave now if you want. Yeah. Um, so he influenced me a little bit with that. Mm. I left to go and do private security. Um, again, ended up getting like a bit of trouble and stuff like that. So mm. I didn't, then went on the um, PT course and just moved here. Mm. Straight in. Yeah, yeah, but I missed it. Like I, I sort of regretted leaving Probably, probably until recently, there was all part of my, you know, part of my head that was like, oh. really, yeah. But you, you, you remember the good times, right? You don't remember the, yeah, getting the weekend taken off you because of some bullshit, and yeah. And I, no, I think as well, looking back, it's the perfect scenario for certain boys, as we were, to if you if you're lost. Like I, I was at home with my dad, and I was I hated my hometown. I hated my scenario. I hated life. Yeah, yeah. Your mum had left and this and this was my escape. It was perfect for me. But as an older man now with a son and business looking back, the whole concept of being in the forces and you know, going off to these foreign countries and killing people and all the rest mm. of the actual job that you're there to do. Because you yeah, don't really yeah. that doesn't really it, it didn't enter my mind it's, at all. It's just you just it's drills, isn't it? It's drills and it's a social. It's um, exactly. It's more fun than anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's more of a laugh. Yeah, yeah. But the whole the, the whole philosophy. I'm not saying that countries don't need to like protect themselves and and you know fight for the greater good and all that. Mm. But you're not fighting for the greater good. You, you're fighting for a politician that decides to go and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know pillage the oil or whatever, right? Yeah. And so you look back and like, why was I? Why? Yeah, no, yeah. I, I never I never had to shoot my rifle in combat yeah. at all. And so I'm very, like, touch wood, I, I'm, I'm glad I never yeah, had to yeah, do yeah. that because now when I look back and I see some of the guys that, that did do that, I mean, a lot of them are really messed up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you said, you got brought up with, like, don't, don't cry, you're yeah, a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I'm not allowed to struggle now. They, they do, because you're not allowed to express, I mean, uh, in our area when we were in, and I think now it's changing a bit, well, now we've gone the extreme, but we've got, <laughs> we've got in the other direction, <laughs> we need to bring it back a little bit. Um... But you didn't talk about anything. No, 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 no. It was like, you know, suck it up and crack Someone's on. like girlfriend dumped them and they were sad. They were like, oh, don't be such a pussy, come on. Yeah, get yeah. A few, get a few drinks in here. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. Like, oh, yeah, all right, yeah. Yeah, and, and now looking back, and now it's like, okay, no, that's not the probably the most smartest way to deal yeah, yeah. with stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because all you're doing is oppressing it until later life anyway. It's, it's going to um, sneak up. It's a difficult, difficult place to... It's a difficult place to be, right? It's difficult... Um, Scenario, whatever to live in every day, but um, I was thinking about this this morning for some reason. If you try to do anything different in the Marines, you get like, like bullied, right? Like, yeah. like joking, but you, you're not allowed to be different. If you're wearing like slightly different clothes to the other lads, which is just like jeans and a t-shirt, it's like, yeah. oh, all right, yeah. Well, someone's a model, you know. It's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you, yeah. you dare not be different. Yes. So it it stops a lot of creativity and stuff like that. Yeah. It's very different. Like when I came out. My stepfather, he was like, um, right, but you need to make some money then, don't you? And I was like, how? Yeah. He's like, get yourself out there. Like, he, he grew up doing that. Mm. He grew up just talking to people and mm. bought a motorbike, sold a motorbike, bought a car, got a car garage. You know, he just, I was like, I don't know how to even speak to people about business. Like, I don't even know. I don't know anything. I got my wage at the end of the month. <laughs> I went and spent that on booze. I was like, I don't know how to make money or yeah. speak to people in a entrepreneur way so 100%. I struggled I was like okay this is 100% not for me like <laughs> uh, 100% yeah, yeah. exactly the same it took, it took you know it took a good couple of years for me to even start having any idea yeah I mean we're straight out of school yeah 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 teacher telling you what to do military instructors telling you what to do yeah and that's all of school life and five years directly uh, I've just been told what to do yeah, yeah. and you leave and you've got no idea I, I wanted to go back in as well the first mm. uh, like three, four, five months I was lost yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually thinking should I go back in mm. and luckily I couldn't because I was medically downgraded because yeah. of the, the incident that I had uh, but yeah I would have tried I would definitely have tried to yeah, have yeah, yeah. Gone it crossed my in. mind a few times yeah, yeah. it's just a structure the- you go to the, you need to go to the doctor you go to the med bay you need to go see the dentist you go see the dentist you need to do this you just go over there your food is laid out for you three times yeah, four yeah. times a day you don't have to think. It's just like a mini society, isn't it, inside of the entire yeah. camp gates? And yeah, and 
you, I mean, you said a funny thing, like you're not allowed to be different. My first day as a nod, when you go on, you get in your drill gear and you go <laughs> out. And we got introduced to the um, the drill uh, corporal or, or drill sergeant or whoever he was. No, it was the, it was actually our drill instructor who lived with us in the foundation. The, the DL, yeah, 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 that was yeah. it, the DL. He lined us all up outside on the parade ground. He walked down the line, it was a single line of us, stopped at me, turned to my face and went, you're a fucking poo baby. <laughs> right? And I was like 16, like... <laughs> and that was my nickname. Everyone called me poo baby for the whole time. <laughs> but, and, <laughs> but it was funny. Like, it was legit funny. You um, couldn't do that now, like, I don't think. Oh, no, you wouldn't get away with it. <laughs> and little things like... Um, I had go- real goofy teeth because I, I sucked my thumb right. and I got my adult teeth as a kid and they really stuck out a lot, like a lot. Yeah. I had braces like four years later in life and they said, oh, he looks like Freddie Mercury. So they got black masking <laughs> tape, put a tash on me and they made me sing or they made me dance to <laughs> Queen while they were handing out the train passes to everyone before we were going on leave as a nod, Right. But what they didn't realize is my dad listened to Queen constantly, right? So I knew all the words. <laughs> so they put it on and I started singing. And oh, fuck, he knows all the words. It was, the, it was so funny. <laughs> I just danced for like half an hour singing. It's funny. It's like you can't take anything seriously. In the, you know, like if you, if you take things seriously, it'll really affect you. And then you've just kind of just got, you build up a thick skin with it, don't you? You do build up a thick skin. And I think that's good. And when you get out, it's one of the things I craved. I'm like, I can't. The, the same level of like jokes and humor I have to like tone it down by yeah. about 10 <laughs> in Civvy Street because you do something and they just think you're wild and yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. I'm like no, no no this is funny and, and some of the nights obviously that you have with the lads like some of the stuff you get up to it's like how did we get away with that it's even like, like I'll, I'll sort of say a watered down joke on my girlfriend and she's like what? <laughs> she's like what's wrong with you and I'm like it's funny she's like no it's like <laughs> disturbing it's not funny <laughs> mate I, funny, I'll give you one funny story and then I'll ask you for one um, this isn't the funniest moment of the marines but it's one of the ones that sticks out and at the time it was hilarious for the whole camp we went out in a fancy dress I was dressed as a woman obviously in uh, a sizes you know when you do silly rig we call it silly rig right? yeah, yeah, yeah. when you go fancy dress we used to go to Woolworths at the time get the age five to seven, you know, fairy outfits and squeeze into them, right? <laughs> and so we went out and we were outside this club in Barnstable when I was at Logs and there was a guy uh, screaming at this girl. They were having a big row down this alley. It was like three o'clock in the morning. The clubs were closed. We were all there, you know, half the lads had left. So was, I was dressed as, as this fairy and the guy pushed the girl really hard. So I just automatically went into the sprint and he turned and looked at me and he didn't know I was coming at him. And as he turned, my punch just hit him perfectly in the face <laughs> and he went flying and, and literally like flew in the air and dropped and everyone was dying, but there was police across the road and they all jumped out of the van and come sprinting for me. And as I ran, the first two steps, the, the high heels that I had on <laughs> flicked, flicked off behind me and I was way faster than the police, you know, I just darted off. And then I found, I was like hiding in bushes and stuff in the town. There was a couple of gentlemen uh, watering flowers in the night. They were going around watering all the flowers of the building. I didn't realize it was the police station. And I come out dressed as a woman. I was like, guys, when you're done here, do you mind giving me a lift back? They said, yeah, yeah, no problem. And then the police walked out the front door and, they would, and I just went, oh, okay, fair enough. Like, I'm not going to run anymore. So all night, one at a time, all these police that were coming off shift and, and on shift were coming into the cell to see this guy dressed as the woman that had knocked out this guy that was beating up his, his missus. <laughs> and then they come in in the morning, it was like 10 a.m. And they said, okay, so we know what you did. We know why you did it. So we're not going to press any charges, but your punishment is you have to walk back to camp dressed like you're dressed. Uh, and I was like, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> no problem. So I was walking on the main road about a mile and a half back to camp dressed as a woman, all the beeps and all the shouts. The last bit of this story is a guy pulled over in a Range Rover 
and said, mate, you're going back to the Marines camp. I was like, yeah. He goes, get in, I'll give you a lift. I got in, he immediately locked the doors of the Range Rover. And I was like, why are you locking the doors? And he was like, no, no, just relax. I'll take you back to camp, whatever. And he was like, show us your dick. And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not showing you my dick. He was like, show us your dick, show us your dick. I'm giving you a lift to show us your dick. I was like, no, no. He goes, no, no, I'm a doctor. Like, I can check it out. And I, <laughs> I was like, mate, listen, I've had a bit of a night. <laughs> take me back to camp or I swear it's not going to, this isn't going to end well for you. And it took me to the gate, dropped me off. I told everyone it was like the, the talk of the camp for about a week. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> so what about you? Like, what, what's... Uh, but do you know what? My story actually follows a very, very similar path to your story. And I'll show you the photos as well. Um, remember rugby, the Army, Navy? Yeah. At Twickenham, right? So yeah. everyone was Massive. Going, again, like in City Rig. So it was me and two of the lads who we went as cheerleaders. So again, my story is very similar to yours. <laughs> Maybe a lot of bootnecks like <laughs> yeah. similar stories. But um, it went on like a crazy night. Well, sorry, we ended up in Twickenham just as cheerleaders, which isn't unusual. Everyone's just as way worse than that. Um, got really drunk like we're chatting with some girls Mr. Bus back to um, Plymouth so we're like fuck we missed the bus we got like our wallet and our phone this is like 2014 maybe or something so like um, anyway we're like right we'll stay we'll stay in London what we'll do we'll stay in London for a couple of hours and we'll get the train back ended up just getting amongst in London don't know where I was don't ask me what part I was in um, just as cheerleaders and walked into this like real like rough bar and he's like dead quiet me and my mate walk in dressed as chill <laughs> <He's>, like, <laughs> usually we're used to lads being like wee yeah. just like looking at us <laughs> no mate this isn't very good he's like god let's get a drink we'll get a drink we'll get one drink I'm like mate we shouldn't be in here anyway fast forward about two hours later they all love us were like dancing on the bar <laughs> <and stuff, right? laughs> um, night turns like a bit crazy we're um, we, we're in the we're in the street and again there's this fight right this guy's like oh, it's massive mate he's like he gets bigger every time I tell a story right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like seven foot <laughs> he was a big boy he must be like six four or something right and um, he like knocks this lad out and then we're just just as chilly we don't know what's going on we're mucking on we're just cheering yeah we're like yeah. can you give me an A whatever like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he like, turns on us and he's walking towards us and mate's like he's coming for us I was like mate he's fucking massive <laughs> So he's like coming at us. So I like go around and grab hold of him, beer hug him, right? I've got his arms. My mate just like fucking laughs him. <laughs> and he flops anyway. Um, and he's on the floor and he's done. And then again, <laughs> police, police come, like the girlfriend of him is kicking off and like trying to fight us and all this kind of stuff. Um, police come, put us in the back of the police car. <laughs> well, they like, were fucked here. Like literally, then are waiting for CCTV from the kebab shop, which they said, oh no, it's the camera's off, luckily. Oh. But they knew what happened and all this kind of stuff. And um, I was sitting in the back of the police car, like, mate, we're completely fucked here. Like, we just, I held his arms back and you hit him. He didn't yeah. actually hit us. So right. I didn't know what we were going to do here. Oh, no. Um, again, we're in, like, mini skirts, <laughs> like, boxes hanging out. We're, like, wasted. <laughs> um, and again, the guys, the police officer's in the front. He's, like, calling up to his mate, like, yeah, I need to check the CCTV. And he's, like, oh, what's the, the sit rep? And he's, like, oh, two tier leaders have just knocked out. Um, this prison guard <laughs> prison guard <laughs> he's a prison guard right? yeah, I found out after he was a prison guard oh. and his mate come into the like knocked on the police car and he's like oh look I just want to say that my mate's been a complete asshole all night he's been starting fights he came out with these lads wow and these lads uh, ended up just like knocked him out and he oh. said they were they were calm they were chill they weren't starting anything wow so they let us go then but oh, it was, it was no. just funny like on the <laughs> On the on the mic or whatever, he's like, yeah, yeah, sit rep is. Uh, I got I've detained two cheerleaders. They just knocked out a prison guard. <laughs> I tell you what, though, you would get respect from police when you were in a bit of trouble or whatever, and they, they knew you were a marine. It was it was different, you know. Like they would, give yeah, you, yeah, a little bit. They yeah. would give you some respect, and, and sometimes they would they were actually former army or marines. A lot of them, yeah, yeah. We had that a few times where we something would happen, and they would say, "Oh, you, you boys are obviously." Bootnecks, like yeah, I used to be a bootneck. You know, just get off, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a bit, there's a level Most of respect. Of the time, lads don't go out looking for trouble, do they? Like, no, we don't go out to fight. No, no, no. One or two, because also you get in, sh- you get in shit with the police, and you get in shit on. You get camp. double. Like, you get, double, yeah. you get literally like they'll throw you in jail, <laughs> like if you mess around like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was more just like who can do the funniest, craziest thing and it's push us disgusting. Thing, yeah, usually. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just disgust. And if you tell. 
you know, a lot of the a lot of the stories from the Marines, you can't really you can't, tell them because people would be like, "Oh, that's gay." <laughs> no, it's, it's we're not, gay. We're not gay. gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds gay to me. Yeah, yeah. We're not. We're not gay though. We're not attracted to men. It's, it's ironic. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny. No, no. Kissing men is not funny. <laughs> yeah. Um. So when I chatted you, to you before and you were telling me about your coaching, I said that you are like an elite level coach, not just because of your physical um, attributes, but you actually coach people properly, mm-hmm. right? And we were talking about whole, the whole like timeline of coaching. Um, now that you're, you know, you're, you're very successful in bodybuilding, you very successful in, in personal training, you're very successful in coaching, and now you're moving on to your next venture. I want to talk about that a little bit. What's the plan? So I'm in the process now of opening a gym, um, about 17,000 square foot, over two floors. Um, my concept is kind of... I feel like the times are changing a little bit when it's just like a gym with equipment in it, right? So mm-hmm. what I'm trying to create is a little bit more towards this. Hybrid is the word thrown around a lot of the time. It used yeah. to be called strength and conditioning, right? Yeah. Now it's hybrid. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to I'm trying to create a bit more of an open space for hybrid training where you can go, you can do go a machine, you can drag over. So I've ordered like a load of kind of ergs, assault runners, assault bikes and stuff like that. Right. Um, I want just open spaces for people to come in groups of twos or threes or whatever right or on your own and you have open space to do your own training so it's okay. like, essentially it's like CrossFit yeah. you haven't got to do a class yeah so it's group training but you can you can be you know individualized doing what you want to do okay so I feel like a lot of gyms you know they've got like a little bit of room for it but not really mm. how, I want, how I want this to be is completely like customizable you mm-hmm. train how you want to train you bring whatever equipment you want into sort of small delicate boxes I see um, I'll show you the, 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 the layout afterwards. yeah um, so you, you've got because you know what it's like if you're like you say you're doing it on the row machine then you want to run and jump on the assault runner for 200 meters you come back to someone's on your own machine you can't right? do that in a commercial gym you can't do it in any of these commercial gyms impossible yeah Impo- you have to stay on your machine and then move on to the next thing, yeah right which things like high rocks and everything like that it's you're constantly changing yeah. around. Well, high rocks, there's, there's loads of other hybrid sort of um, events happening, right? You mm. run one yourself. The high rocks. You know, you run the like the, the hybrid training. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The crucible, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So similar to like, if people want to train that style, for example, mm. it's very hard in a commercial gym. Mm. So what I'm trying to do is um, give a place which is easily mm. sort of access to... Mm. <laughs> You go on your on the assault run and someone's you come back and someone's on your rowing machine. Mm-hmm. Your workout's fucked, right? Mm-hmm. So we have loads of assault runners. We have loads of rowing machines. We have loads of skiers. Loads of assault bikes, dumbbells, uh, barbells, whatever. Bring it into your little box. That's your workout station, right? For the hour, amazing. Do whatever you want to do in that mm. hour, two hours. Don't care. But that's mm. yours. Mm. Next to it, someone else doing what they want. Mm. And there's enough equipment for everyone to do their own. Thing. I see. I see. Are you going to run classes as well? Yes, I am. Yeah. For certain times of the day, uh, mornings and evenings. Okay. Starting off, um, and then we'll see where it goes from there. And you're going to program. So I'm looking for two guys actually. Okay, two coaches. Yeah, looking for two coaches. Um, I put like a little thing on my Instagram a few weeks ago and I sort of said like marine style hasn't got to be marines but yeah. you know people like you can get up and run a 10k right tomorrow you haven't got to like train for a 10k right um, you can lift weights correctly right. you can row you can do everything and you're also good with people you're okay standing in front of right 10-15 like, people stuff like that mm. which it, it's quite hard to find though really I, so far it's been quite hard to find really? a couple of people yeah but mm. just just for what what I want specifically um, I don't want a copy and paste of me I want something right. a little bit different to me yeah. it brings a little something else yeah a little bit different yeah um, yeah yeah you'll you'll find that you will attract the right people at the right time mm. if you have a vision in your mind of where you want what this place to be and you've got that vision set in your mind it's weird that people will show up and 
you might not realize every single coach that I have, every single person that's doing something, I had, a, I had the idea in my head, like this type of person, right? And then they'll come in and I won't realize. immediately realize that they're the person. And then when they get to work or after like a few months, I'm like, oh, that's the person that I had in my mind. It come a bit, they come a bit different to what I was expecting, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's exactly what I needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe not what I wanted, but what I needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and you'll end up with personalities like Boxer can now we've got uh, 16 coaches. Wow, okay. Uh, or freelancers, full-time, like a bit of a mix of yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. And they're exactly what I, what right. I wanted. Uh, but so you have to go through some as well, like, you know, you have to, yeah, yeah, you have yeah. to hire people and fire people and go through that whole thing. Yeah, which is, yeah, yeah. You're a business owner, you're going to get that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, you'll be surprised. Like you'll be like, "Oh, I'm, I'm opening next week. What's going on?" And then someone will just appear, and you'll be like, "Ha, that's yeah, the yeah, person yeah. I wanted." Yeah. Uh, so you're looking for two full timers. Yeah. So it's going to be full timers, kind of like mornings and evenings, or mornings and or evenings. You're going to coach classes as well. I am. Yeah. 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 I think in the beginning, it's really yeah, yeah, because I wanted really to follow the way that I've envisioned with it with the For sure. energy and um, yeah. layout the intensity as well yeah um, so the, the idea of the, the group classes is a little bit different I'm bringing like a bit of a military aspect into it um, but I hate using the word military because then people just think like boot camp okay it's sort of oh it's like in the army is it and I'm like it's mm. the marines for a start <laughs> mm, yeah it's everything is going to be done in um, body armour Oh, in, nice. In the, like, plate carriers. Uh, I'm getting like grappling dummies, like 60 kilo grappling dummies. Nice. So it's going to be sort of fireman's carries cool. or drags, things like that. So cool. it's putting a lot of, uh, like the way I describe it, but I need to word it a little bit better, is like this is the sort of training, if shit hits the fan, yeah. anywhere in your life, something goes wrong, mm. this is the sort of stuff that you would mm. wish you could do mm. again like dragging a body F- functional um, would be functional another yeah. word that they throw around yeah yeah it's like ready for anything yeah 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 nice I like it so that's very the, cool that's the idea behind it very cool um, you might even find that you get some of the emergency services um, police military and people coming in to yeah, yeah. to train that type of training because that's exactly what they need right? yeah 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 dragging people heavy kit on yeah yeah um, you know it's uh, so it's, it's like a, it's like a luxury bottom field right I'm trying to create right um, so again I, I need the right guys mm. for that as well and yeah I think you could go yeah like former military yeah 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 uh, former military you know so some of the lads I've met who have seen great so far and not not military but they could have been quite easily you know it's like a very structured kind of right almost like a, like a high level CrossFit guy would be yeah would be great for it yeah are you gonna uh, add in any of your online as like a mixed like a continue with my online or? so like um, uh, some gyms now are offering like you come to the gym and maybe it's more like a nutrition kind of sorry all, yeah, yeah, all yeah. rounded kind of like that's, approach. That's what I want to do as well. Yeah. I want to. What I like about um, here, I've been like spying on it a little bit, is mm. um, like very community. Yeah. Um, a lot of like big commercial gyms obviously don't have that. Yes. So I'm again, I'm trying to like bridge the gap. I mean, it's not a huge gym, mm. um, and it's not like a small local kind of training studio. Mm. It's a little bit in the middle. So I still want to try and create a community. I still want to try and create. You know, like Dubai Marathon, he wants to do it. We'll give you a six, seven, eight week program. We'll do it with you. Nice. Um, I'm trying to create that a little bit. So you've yeah. got a big training facility, but then you've also got that, like, come to me if you need help with your diet. Come to nice. me if you, if you want to do a marathon. Do you know what? Train for it. I'll go do it with you. Or we'll, yeah. get, we'll get a team of people doing it with you. Yeah. So that's what I want to create because. Um, yeah. No, very cool. Yeah, I don't think it's really happening so much in the bigger gyms anyway. No, they're not. I mean, that's that's where we. That's our advantage. Being a boutique is yeah, yeah. the community. A lot of the, a lot of gyms say community, and a lot of gyms do have community. A lot of the smaller boutiques they have they have mm. communities, and it's somewhere that our kind of like thing was um, breaking down the barriers between you know, a, a lot of people that haven't trained for many years get intimidated by going to the gym. Yeah, right, and. They haven't trained. They they feel unfit. They they don't like the way they look. And I would be calling all these leads 
in the, in the early days, like, you know, come to the gym, come to the gym when I opened my first CrossFit gym. And they'd all say, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to get fit before I come. And I'm like, well, hold on. I've opened this business for that reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you mean you need to get fit? And then I was after the question, I'm like, okay. And then when I, when I set up this place, I was like, right, we need to be for everyone. We need to be unintimidating. If you're a, a lady or a guy, maybe you're not 21 anymore. Maybe you haven't trained for five years. Maybe you feel a little bit intimidated. We are for that person. Yeah, yeah. And at the same time, I, being someone who's quite fit, can do the same workout as you. And at the end of the workout, can feel exactly the same as yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. It's just that I obviously did more reps because I'm a little bit fitter. Yeah. You did slightly less reps because you're unfit, but we feel the same. And um, and then the community aspect, like where we've done well, is uh, make, making sure that it's not just about the gym and the fitness. Um, training the team and setting an environment so that the team understand that this is people's second home. Mm. And, and so how do you want to be treated when you go to a place that you go to every single day? In terms and, of like employees and stuff like yes. that. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the, the front of house, the, the people that clean, the people that do everything, that the full team needs to be on board with yeah, your vision yeah, yeah. and to learn people's names. and even It goes, how you it goes a long way, doesn't it? Mate, like the small details. S- basics. Yeah. Smile when you see somebody. It's like a certain, there was a gym I used to go to in Dubai a lot. Um, and the staff would change every three or four months at the start. And, you know, there's, so say, like, very attractive women at the front of the gym. Right. But they don't even greet you. They're kind of, like, on the phone right. as you walk in. You're like, it doesn't yeah. really matter. And then you go to some gyms and they're like, oh, hi, Toby, how are you? Oh, yeah. I haven't seen you for a few days. Or yeah. like, oh, how was your holiday? I saw your Instagram or something. Yeah, exactly. And that goes so much further. It's It's massive. Yeah, you feel like you don't want to go anywhere else because it's like part of your little family or whatever. So yeah, it's, um, no, one hundred percent. And what you do really well as well, like one of the things you've said with your online, having clients for so long, it's that personal approach. You actually legitimately care about that yeah, person, yeah, yeah. and then you embed, or I want to say, train your team to be like that. But you you set a culture from the start. Like this is the kind of place we are. We care about people. This is people's second home. And then everyone gets on board. And eventually, you won't even have to... You've just set the, the standard yeah, from yeah, the yeah. start. Everyone gets around that. All the new people that come in get around well, that. They see, they see how it is, right? Yeah, and it makes its own little like energy ball yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of stuff going. And it grows. And you're like, I'm not even in that anymore. <laughs> like, I'm, on the, I'm in the background. <laughs> I'm not coaching anymore. And it's just taking on its own thing. Yeah, yeah. But that's the exciting thing about growing a business. It's, it's about... It outgrows you, and that's the, the thing that I love about doing doing this um, is that when you're when you're PTing, like with making money as well, like you do a PT session, you're only impacting one person for that hour. Mm. You're earning that hourly wage essentially. You stop tri- you stop coaching people. You stop standing on the gym floor. As someone who's trying to earn money doing this, you stop earning money. Yeah. And how many people can you impact in a day? I mean, uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I mean, 12 is burnout. 12 is burnout, yeah. Eight is like, uh, okay. Mm. So eight people a day. Uh, With a gym, you can do eight classes with 30 people in each class. That's that's probably a lot of people, but you're doing like 150 to 200 people a day you're impacting. Uh, So the the reach, you're you're impacting a lot more people. Mm. And when you as a business owner go on holiday you don't stop earning money that's that's the thing the place is still running that is the thing with coaching in the past when it was just my only stream of income was I loved it and it allowed me to be flexible it allowed me to travel especially when I was competing and stuff I'd usually take three, four weeks off or at one point I took I think two months off mm. but you have to make sure that you've earned enough to give mm. yourself that two months off mm. because when I was competing actually it was my coaching would like boost loads. People see you getting in that condition and getting on stage and seeing the process um, draws a lot of eyes to you. Right. People, people want to start training with you. Right. Like, oh, I want to coach or I want to train with you in person, PT with you. I'm like, well, uh, I'm in the UK competing. Mm. I'll be back in four weeks. Right. You, you've lost that person Gone. by then. They're yeah, not going to yeah, hang yeah. around that long. So um, it was always an issue for me to, you know, 
you go away for a week, you're spending for a week, and you're not earning for a week. So it's, yeah. it's double, right? It's yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, double hit. Yeah, but then I, again, I got into online coaching. Um, 2021, 20, 2020, sorry, 2020, um, which has always been sort of like 50 percent of my income at the time. So it was a little bit better that way. But is it still 50 percent? Um, no, it's dropped off now. What are you going to do with your PTs now? You're opening the gym. I still keep some of them on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just train them at your ups. Keep some of them. Maybe um, some of them drop. Yeah. So what? What I try to do is just. Um, like I've got a couple of people now who've got second PTs okay um, which I'm like totally fine with yeah <laughs> some people are not they get like really arsy about it right do they <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah like <laughs> um, so I'm just trying to like you know I keep people on but look I can maybe train you instead of four days a week I can train you two days a week right just keep it flowing through um, yeah. I like doing it yeah I kind of want to PT in my own gym I think it would be quite a nice right. nice feeling to do right. it right right um yeah, if we'll see if I get if I get overloaded, then I won't. But I'm just going to be very like flexible with it. And yeah, see where it most, goes. Most of my like one guy I've trained him for seven years now. Seven years I PT'd him, so I know that like if I say, mate, I've got to be a bit flexible the next six months, he's like, no problem. Wow. So things like that. I mean, most of my clients I've had for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, they understand me. They they don't want to train with anybody else, or if they do they ask me can I go and train with them I'm like absolutely go ahead wow um, see that's 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 loyalty and yeah, you've, built, yeah. you've built up that level of respect and that relationship with people yeah yeah and now all you're going to do is build that but with a, a, a much larger group of people yeah and they'll be they'll be dieharders what's the name of the gym uh, the locker the locker yeah, nice yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it thought you'd like it that's awesome <laughs> what a name <laughs> yeah I did this is like the dream this is like the dream project I went, I went down a different route with Boxica and, and um, it, was, it was mainly because when I went to New York and Amsterdam and London re- researching for this place and going into places like the top studios in the world they were very intimidating yeah. I was like okay they're doing well but it, I, I, I don't everyone was really good looking and all the women were skinny and I was intimidated walking in there and everyone looked a certain way and was a certain way. And I was like, okay, yeah, I get it. Like the social media is really cool and it's kind of like a upscale place, but I feel uncomfortable mm. here. It's uh, like you don't even want to sweat there almost, right? It's uh, Yeah, 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 like yeah. If everyone's it's like... Full, it, it's like not even working out as well, really. It's more just like posy stuff yeah, and yeah. taking selfies. So I was like, nah. Nah, there's, uh, I feel like I can help people in the world in a different way, you know? See, the majority of people as well are not in good shape and very lean and very motivated. The majority of people are not, and that's why they come to... Like, the, like yeah, the majority of people are not confident nope. and they are out of shape and they're not fit. Exactly. And they struggle with discipline. And they're exactly. the sort of people that you... Need that the, the need the help. They need there's, that. There's that's, more of them. There's more of those people. That's you just the market. Need to find a way most to of the market attract them, right? Yeah. Again, 100%. if you have this very, you know, upscale boutique, I don't know what you call aesthetic gym, well then you attract those people. Yeah. But all those those people, they don't necessarily need you. No. They might just go there because it looks good for Instagram exactly. or for a bit of a socialize, and then next week they go somewhere else. Exactly. It's the people that kind of need someone, right? Need support and stuff like that. Uh, they're the ones that will be loyal to you. Uh, 100%. And they're the ones that you can impact the most. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. help them and brought them to a level in their life. I mean, I, people tell me all the time, Cyrus, this place changed my life. Mm. I'm so grateful for it. And it was just, you know, building an environment that they felt comfortable in. There's nothing spe- magical about the movement. Uh, we do the same movements. Every gym in the world does the same movements. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not the program or the movements or anything special about that. It's just the environment that we created where people can feel comfortable and they can stay in that environment long enough to get the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, ultimately, it's just about, you yeah. You can go cycling. You can even do yoga. You can do bodybuilding. You can do this hybrid, tactical, crossfit, what. You can you can feel and look good doing most yep. physical yep. activities. Um, it, it, it's just be, being in the game long enough, you know. So that that was our whole thing. But um, like um, even with gyms as well, it's not just about who's got the biggest gym with the best equipment, mm. because the biggest gyms with the best equipment are not 
the best gyms. Sometimes these smaller, like more dark, low-funded gyms are the best gyms. Yeah. Like some of the best like bodybuilding gyms I've been to in the UK, like literally the machines are falling apart in really? there, and you can smell the sweat on the floor. Ah, but it's something really yeah, cool about it, it is and the people in there are very inspiring. And, yeah, you know that's the. That was the direction I wanted to go in. Mm. For me, that was way better than a brand new bright lit gym with depressed equipment. Yeah. Probably be more beneficial for me physically, but mentally this place was like yeah. the people I wanted to surround myself with. And that nice. was the mindset that I wanted to get into. Nice. So I think yeah, it's not just about like throwing money at stuff, is it? And having mm. the best facility. No. It's about... People don't care about that. No, no. Mate, they, the stuff that we spent money on in the beginning, in the early days... I look back now, I'm like, idiot. <laughs> like, no one's coming here for the high-grade um, finishing we did in the bathroom <laughs> and, and the, the, the name on the shower tap. No one gives a yeah, F yeah, about yeah. that stuff. They just, it's the people, the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. The, the, that's, so. what, that's what separates it, isn't it? I think that's why it's doing very well. Is- mm, mm. So I'll um, slowly start wrapping up here. And uh, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. It was great to get an insight into your mindset and uh, you know what, where all this kind of crazy stuff uh, you, you do comes from. Uh, it's very inspiring. Uh, every, and I, I message you all the time when I see you like doing stuff like, man, yeah, you yeah, are yeah. mental. <laughs> it is absolute psycho stuff, but it's really inspiring and really cool to watch. Thank you. I wish you the best of luck with the launch of your... When, when is the gym launching? Uh, March, hopefully. March. Yeah, it's not so long now, like four months. Yeah, are they, this all going on inside then, or, or have you? Uh, uh, not yet. We're waiting on one final um, approval, and then it's. Yeah. We're working against the clock with it as well. Yeah. Plus, I, we want to open up before summer. Yeah. Um, have a you know have a few months before summer for sure. In and, for sure, I can imagine with a place like that though, it's not so complicated with the actual work. You no. Know, like the, quite, bit, quite bit basic, right? Yeah, like yeah, in yeah. Terms like of, the interior stuff is not overcomplicated. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to look really cool. It's going to look really cool, but it's not. Um, yeah, nothing. No, exactly. You don't like I said. You don't need the for, for the concept as well. Like you, you don't need shiny things everywhere dangling off the thing. It needs yeah, to be yeah. clean, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. show you the concept after this. Actually, yeah, I'll have a look and I'll come down and support you Thank when you, you open. Man. And um, looking forward to it, man. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for the time. Thank you, bro.